Today we're going to be talking about what your required minimum distribution or RMD is and how it's calculated. I've been getting a lot of questions about this lately, so I figured it'd be good to shoot a video on it just explaining what your RMD is and how it's calculated. My name is Spencer Ford, CEO and Wealth Advisor with Conservative Financial Solutions, as well as a Certified Financial Planner, and let's get into today's video. All right, so first things first, let's talk about what your required minimum distribution is. A required minimum distribution or RMD are minimum amounts that an IRA or retirement plan account owner generally must withdraw annually starting the year they reach age 73. So right now, age 73 is that required minimum distribution age. It was previously age 70 and a half, then it increased in 2019 to age 72, and then again in 2022, it increased to age 73. And if you're born 1960 or later, it's actually set to increase again in 2033. So your required minimum distribution age would be age 75. But if you've already started taking a required minimum distribution because you were age 72 before the law changed, you still have to take your required minimum distribution so make sure you do that. And the reason why is because you have until the end of the year to take that required minimum distribution. Otherwise you face a 25% penalty. And not only do you have a 25% penalty, but you still owe tax on that 25% that you didn't receive. So make sure you satisfy your required minimum distribution. There are a couple of exceptions to this. So if you are still working and you're part of a 401k plan or an employer sponsored plan, and that plan document allows you to delay your required minimum distribution while you're still active with the company, then you can actually delay your required minimum distribution until you retire. Now there's even some exceptions around that rule, but in a general sense, that is one of the exceptions to delay your required minimum distribution if you're still working at age 73 to extend it even beyond that. Another exception is, is the first year you have to take your required minimum distribution, you have until April 1st of the next year to take that required minimum distribution instead of the deadline of December 31st. So it's the first year you have to take your required minimum distribution. Maybe you forgot, maybe some tax planning says, hey, it's better for me to take it the next year than you actually have until April 1st the next year. But if you do that, if you wait to take that first distribution the next year in April, you're gonna have to take two required minimum distributions in the same year because you'll have to take the one for the you'll take you'll have taken the one for the previous year by April 1st and then you'll also have to have have the one satisfied for the current year before December 31st. So keep that in mind because it may not make sense from a tax perspective to double up on a required minimum distribution in a single year. Now, how is your required minimum distribution calculated? Well, you take your December 31st value of the previous year divided by your life expectancy factor based on your age at the end of the current year. So to make that less confusing, let's walk through an example. So in our example, we have our December 31st value as of the previous year. So that would be if we're talking in, in today's terms, you take your December 31st value as of 2023. So we'll just pretend that's $100,000 just to make the math simple. And then you take your age at the end of the current year. So let's say at the end of 2024, it, does, it doesn't matter what your age is now if you haven't had your birthday yet. You take your age at the end of the year, and let's say your age is, at, is going to be 75. So your factor, if we go to the Uniform Lifetime Table, which is published by the IRS, your factor is 24.6. So we have to divide that 100,000 by 24.6, which means your required minimum distribution is $4,065.04. It comes out to about a a distribution percentage of 4.07%. Now I want you to notice something. This factor decreases each year. The percentage of the account increases each year. So the likely scenario is, is that your required minimum distribution is going to increase each year. There are some factors such as if your account balance goes down enough that your required minimum distribution might be less, but for most families, they will actually see an increase in the required minimum distribution each year and you want to keep that in mind because the more you take out from that pre-tax retirement account, the more you're going to owe 
in taxes. So one, one way that we help families overcome this problem is by doing pre-tax planning for them. Here's an easy example. Right now for most families, they're married filing joint. Sometime in the future, the likely scenario is one of them is going to be a surviving spouse. Now they're going to be a single filer subject to the much more constrained tax brackets. And if they didn't take any steps to mitigate that required minimum distribution previously, now they're a single filer faced with increasing required minimum distributions without having the benefit of those expanded married filing joint brackets. So depending upon your situation, planning ahead of time can actually mean saving you hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes than if you just sat and you know, kept going with the government's plan. Typically the government's plan, not gonna be as good as what your plan is if you do some pre-planning. So another question that I often get is, what can you do with your required minimum distribution? Well, you can spend it. I mean, if you have the capacity, if your portfolio can allow for it, you can just spend that as extra income if you want to. You can gift it, you can go on an extra vacation, or you can cross save it. Let's say you have to take out this money, you don't really need it, you can pay the tax on it, you, you have to pay the tax on it, and then you can cross save it. You can cross save it into a bank account if you want to, but those aren't paying much interest. So you can actually cross save that back into an investment account, but that investment account can't be an IRA. I get that question a lot. Can I just put it back into my IRA after I pay the tax? Can I put it into a Roth IRA? The answer is no. You have to reinvest it into what's called a non-qualified account. We can get into that later, but just know it can't go back into your IRA, but can you reinvest it? Can you buy stocks, bonds, mutual funds, exchange traded funds with that money? Absolutely you can. We just have to be put that money back in a specific place for you so it can continue to be invested and grow. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, if you did please hit subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.